Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're diving into the world of Nikola Tesla. And let me tell you, the research you dug up for this is amazing. Biographies, articles, even some old lecture notes. It's incredible. I went a bit down the rabbit hole for this one. Well, it's paid off. It's exciting to dig into a big inventor like this, someone whose work is everywhere in our tech, but maybe um, not so much in our history books, right? Right. Why isn't Tesla a household name like, say, Edison? That's a big part of what we're going to try to uncover today. And that's where things get really interesting. I mean, we're going beyond just the invented this, and that's timeline, right? Absolutely. Using a psychohistorical approach, it helps us understand, well, Tesla's motivations, his setbacks, like the whole picture. It's about understanding the man in his time, not just the inventions themselves. I like it. A psychohistorical deep dive into Nikola Tesla. So you have all this source material in front of you. What's the first thing that jumps out at you about Tesla? Honestly, the sheer disconnect between Tesla's impact and his fame, or, well, lack thereof, really. Mm. Think about it. AC power, induction motors, yeah. wireless communication. These are all things we just we take for granted today. And they all trace back to Tesla in a huge way, but he's not exactly a household name. You're right, and multiple sources we have actually point that out. It's like he's the the forgotten genius behind so many modern conveniences, it makes you wonder, what were those early influences that shaped his path? Where did it all begin? Well, that's where his upbringing comes in. I mean, yeah. we're talking about 19th century Serbia, yeah. right? A region like on the cusp of so much change. Yeah. Imagine the cultural influences, the the weight of history. Right. And then his family background is fascinating, mm. too. Generations of Serbian clergy and military leaders. You, know, really? you can see these dualities like faith and reason, tradition and progress, all kind of woven into, into the fabric of his life. It's like those early experiences planted the seeds for his later innovations, for that drive to invent and defy expectations. Speaking of which, Cypher's biography mentions an incident from Tesla's youth that really caught my eye. He's studying at the Polytechnic School in Graz, and he has this idea for an AC motor. His professor at the time basically laughs him off, calls it a perpetual motion scheme. Oh, yeah. I remember reading that. Mm. That anecdote is a perfect example of Tesla's like lifelong struggle against conventional thinking. Remember, this is the late 1800s, early days. Direct current, DC, was the only game in town. Most experts, I mean, even brilliant minds, they, they couldn't envision a practical use for AC motors. But young Tesla... He held on to that vision. Right? He did. Fueled by an, al an almost unwavering belief in his own intuition. It's incredible. It's that unwavering belief that eventually, well, it leads him to America, right? To yeah. the doorstep of Thomas Edison, no less. Exactly. Talk about a clash of titans. Here's Tesla, this young Serbian engineer coming to work for, like, the king of D.C., the man who practically, what, invented the light bulb? What could go wrong, right? Well, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. This is a clash of titans. And the sources really highlight those those contrasting personalities at play here, right? Oh, absolutely. You have Edison, right? Yeah. The shrewd businessman, the the tireless tinkerer, who famously said, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. And then you have Tesla, who seems to embody that inspiration part a bit more, wouldn't you say? Totally. He's described as... as almost flamboyant, you know, captivating yeah. audiences with his lectures and experiments. Exactly. And those those differences played out in their work, too. Like Edison, he favored a more incremental approach, refining existing technologies, right? Right. Uh, while Tesla, uh, he was all about bold, disruptive ideas. Yeah. Remember that anecdote you mentioned earlier about, about Tesla's professor dismissing AC motors? Yeah, yeah. Well, here he was working for, for the biggest champion of D.C., tasked with improving D.C. machinery. It sounds almost comical. Was was Edison threatened by Tesla's ideas or just, just not interested? What do you think? It was likely a bit of both. I mean, the war of currents, as it's often called, was was raging at the time. You well, know. Right, yeah. Edison, heavily invested in his DC systems, saw he saw Tesla's AC technology as a direct threat, I think. A direct threat to his to his whole empire, practically. It, exactly. There are even accounts of Edison, get this, publicly electrocuting animals to demonstrate the supposed dangers of AC current. Wow. Talk about a publicity stunt, but that's Edison, always the showman. Although it does make that story about him promising Tesla $50,000 to improve his DC generators seem a little less believable, doesn't it? You're right to be skeptical. Yeah. Many of the sources we've looked at, they cast doubt on that story, yeah. suggesting it's, it's more myth than historical fact, really. Right. 
But regardless, the relationship between Tesla and Edison, well, it was destined to be short-lived, to say the least. Right. Tesla, convinced of AC's superiority, eventually left Edison's company to, to forge his own path. And that's when things really start to take off for him, right? Yeah. He develops his AC polyphase system, secures patents, and basically, well, he lays the foundation for the electrical grid that, that we still use today. It's incredible. Precisely. The pivotal moment, not just in Tesla's career, but in technological history, right? Yeah. Huge. His work on AC motors and polyphase systems directly challenged the 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 dominant paradigm, you know? Mm -hmm. It ushered in a whole new era of electrical engineering. Uh, and it wasn't just about the technology itself. I mean, Tesla, he was a master of presentation. Oh, yeah. A, a true showman. He knew how to captivate an audience. You're talking about his lectures in Europe, right? Yeah. I read about those. He was practically a celebrity over there, passing high-frequency currents through his body, lighting up bulbs wirelessly. It sounds more like, like magic than science. It's true. He electrified audiences, literally and figuratively. Imagine the impact of seeing this, this charismatic inventor seemingly in control of these unseen forces, uh. illuminating bulbs without wires. It, it must have seemed almost supernatural, especially to those witnessing it for the first time. Safer's book mentions some of the reactions from, from people like William Crookes and James Dewar, mm -hmm. both like prominent scientists at the time. And Crookes described the scene as bordering on the supernatural. And Dewar, completely captivated by Tesla's work, even urged him to stay in Europe longer. It's amazing how those early successes, those those public displays, it's like they fueled Tesla's even bigger ambitions. Oh, absolutely. And that's where Wardenclyffe comes in, right? Yeah. This this wasn't just another invention. It was it was like a whole new system, a way to to change the world. Exactly. Wardenclyffe, it was Tesla's attempt to to realize his most audacious vision, I think you could say, global wireless power transmission. It's incredible. Imagine, just imagine a world without without the need for for power lines, right? Yeah. Where electricity could be could be beamed to even even the most remote corners of the globe. That was Tesla's dream. It sounds almost too good to be true, even today. But back then, it must have seemed like something straight out of out of science fiction. What did the sources say about how he? how he planned to actually make it work. Well, the science behind it is is pretty complex. It, it involves the Earth's own resonant frequencies and what Tesla called standing waves. Wow. But essentially, the Wardenclyffe Tower, it was designed to be like this giant transmitter, hmm. right? Capable of sending electrical energy through, through the Earth itself to be picked up by receivers um, tuned to its frequency. So, so instead of wires, you know, strung across poles, he's he's talking about sending electricity through the ground. Exactly. That's wild. But even if the science worked, didn't he need a, a ton of money to to build something like that? He absolutely did. And that's where J.P. Morgan, well, he enters the picture. Of course. Tesla, ever the showman, managed to to convince Morgan, one of the wealthiest, I mean, the wealthiest financier of the time, to back his project. Wow. But. But here's the thing, Tesla, he, he promised Morgan more than just wireless power. He talked about, about global communication, even, even hinting at the possibility of, get this, contacting other worlds. Contacting other worlds. Now that's a bold fundraising pitch. So, so what happened? Did, did Morgan buy it? Initially, yes. You know, Morgan, he, he invested a significant sum, enough to, to begin construction on the Wardenclyffe Tower. Okay. But as the project progressed and the, the promised results, they failed to materialize. Morgan's enthusiasm, well, it waned, to say the least. It's that classic clash, isn't it? Yeah, the, yeah. the visionary inventor always, always pushing boundaries versus the, the pragmatic investor looking for, for tangible returns. Precisely. Yeah. Tesla, convinced of his vision, he poured everything he had into Wardenclyffe, but it, it wasn't enough. Morgan, growing increasingly skeptical, eventually he pulled his funding, leaving the project unfinished and, and Tesla in financial ruin. It's a it's a tragic end to such a bold endeavor. All those dreams of a wireless future dashed against the rocks of financial reality. It is. It, it's a reminder that even even the most brilliant ideas, they often face an uphill battle in a world, you know, driven by by practical concerns. Tesla's story, it's its a testament to the, the power of imagination, what do you say? Absolutely. But it also highlights the the challenges of, of turning those grand visions into, into reality. And, and that's the line, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So as we wrap up our deep dive on Tesla, what's what's the takeaway for our listener? What can we what can we learn from his triumphs, but also his setbacks? I think perhaps the the most important lesson is this. Never, never underestimate the power of a bold idea. Right. Tesla's 
vision of a world, you know, connected, empowered, wirelessly. It, it may have been ahead of its time, but it, it continues to inspire us today. Right? right, it really does. As we stand on the cusp of, of new technological breakthroughs, it's it's worth remembering the the legacy of Nikola Tesla, the man who who dared to dream of a, of a wireless future. That's a great place to leave it. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive into the incredible life and work of Nikola Tesla. It's been enlightening, it's been inspiring, and it certainly left us with a lot to think about. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep that Tesla-like spark of curiosity alive.